So check check this out. Check this out. If you look at here is a Bohr diagram of chlorine. Now I tell you it's chlorine uh, just because. I can't put anything in here. So it's chlorine. And so 17 is the atomic number. And if you don't believe me, take out your, your take this out. And you look at chlorine. Where's chlorine? There it is. Chlorine's here. Atomic number is 17, right? So if the atomic number is 17, that means it's got 17 protons, therefore 17 electrons. So in the inner, I can only take two. One, two. The next level, oh sorry, thank you. The next level out can carry eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I still got seven left. So ten, eleven, twelve, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. And I'm done. Yeah? On the first circle, aren't the two zeros supposed to be together? Yeah. 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 Y
so that they can keep up with it. And so you guys, if you get to a point where you say, geez, I wish I could listen to that again, then you can. You can go into Moodle, click on Mr. H does notes. There it is. Yes, sir. Say again. The, the stuff for what? <laughs> Oh yeah, that was E-Man speaking right there. <laughs> E-Man says hi to all the basketball girls. <laughs> I had to. I had to. I I could tell you I could tell you a high school story of mine, but I'm not going to. <laughs> okay, are are you are you okay with this thing? So if you looked at these things, at this thing here, the 2A18, where does the 18s and the 32s come in? Well, again, if you look at your periodic table, and you go from here, if you go, if you count how many blocks there are across here, this is what you're going to come up with. You're going to have 2 in the first one, 2 and 6 is 8, 2 and 6 is 8, Across here, this is where it goes to 18. You count them. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. That's where the 18 comes from. Same with this one, it's 18. Now you're looking at this one and you're saying, but Mr. Hayden, you said 32. This periodic table is a bit of a a lie because the what they've done is they've actually ladies what they've done is they've split the periodic table here and taken out this section this section really and truly is supposed to live right there now the only reason why we have a periodic table that looks like this is because it's easy to fit on one page um, um, you can go on uh, Google Images and type in periodic table and probably nine times out of ten you're going to get something that looks like this with a, with a little thing here. But the really good, the really uh, truthful periodic tables will have this split out, this whole thing. We, we, you cut this, you split this out and spread across the page and you pull this up and you insert it between. That's truthful. So when you're counting across from cesium here to radon here, what you need to do is you go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 7, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32. See? Same thing is true in this bottom one. One, two, three, four, five, blah, 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 and continue counting up here to 32. That's why there was numbers. And so, really and truly, the moral of the story here is you don't have to memorize this if you remember to count blocks on this. Sing a beauty and a joy forever. Probably one of the most powerful scientific documents that exists is the periodic table of elements. Okay. Um, page five. Page five is basically a text description of what I've said to you about chlorine. So I'm not going to read through that. If you get to the, if you get, uh, if you're trying to study near your trying to figure out what was that about, then you can turn this over, read it, and it should make sense to you, okay? Uh, okay, periodic table. Uh, what I'm going to do is we are going to doctor the periodic table. Uh, this periodic table is going to be quite valuable to you, I hope. Uh, let me... Just check something because I want to make sure that I do my colors right. Because I'm going to be 
because uh, when we start naming, uh, I'm going to teach you a, um, a cheat. Actually, I'm going to actually let you cheat. Wait, wait, Okay. Okay, this is going to take a little bit. I'm going to use uh, these guys. Okay. Periodic table. Okay, guys. You're going to be so, so sad if you don't follow. I want you to notice something about the periodic table. We have this magic staircase here. Now this is the dividing line between, you can see here on this, non-metal, so all the non-metals live here. All the metals live on this side. So you can see that there are far uh, many more metals than there are non-metals. Uh, but living both on top of the stair and underneath the stairs. These guys have a special name. These guys are called metalloids or semiconductors. A, a humanoid, the, the term for hu the actual meaning of the word humanoid means something resembling a human. Okay? A metalloid is something resembling a metal. So I'm going to I'm going to shave this side You know what? If you guys were really smart, you would refuse to sit together. Because you're going to distract each other. And I I I I think I need to read you guys a bit of a riot act. Chemist, the chemistry portion of this course is the mm, gives students the most cause for anxiety. So, how are you going to eliminate anxiety? Go get them, girl. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, dear. Yeah, you go, girl. You go, girl. That's what I'm talking about. Seriously? Seriously. You guys really need to be on this. I, this is my 20th, I think it's my 20th year of teaching science 10. There's never been a group that has had an easier time in chemistry 12 or chemistry, the chemistry portion than any other group, any other part of the course. So if you're going to eliminate your anxiety, you're going to concentrate. And you're, when I give you a piece of homework, you're going to do it that night. And you're not going to come into my classroom with it undone. If you do, you're screwed. Because I'm going to go on with something. And unless you have that in your back pocket, you are not going to understand what I'm talking about. And then you're going to get farther behind. And then one week down the road, you're going to be panicking. Oh my goodness, the chapter test is tomorrow and I have no idea what the entire chapter is about. Love you enough to kick you in the backside. Okay. Non-metals, I'm going to color the, all of the non-metals blue except the noble gases because they don't enter into reactions. So I'm going to go like this. I'm not going to color in each one. I'm just going to highlight around the corners. These are the non-metals, okay? Now, to do the metals is tougher. 
what we have to do is we have to separate the metals the the metals into two groups okay now the toughness is because if you look at these guys you will notice that some of them have one combined capac capacity and others have two okay I'm gonna try to do this first shot Yeah, I'm, what I'm going to do is green is going to be the ones that have only one combined capacity and the uh, red ones are going to be the ones that have two. So I'm going to try this, okay? So I see a separation here. I see a separation here. I see a separation here. Technetium is actually an island unto itself. You'll see that it, ha it is surrounded by um, uh, what they call multivalent or, or atoms that have more than one combining capacity. So this guy here, you actually have to color technetium in. Like so. We are not going to worry about these, see these guys with brackets around them down here? We are going to ignore them because they only exist in the laboratory for parts of a second. So that's why they don't have a combining capacity. Is that we never can combine them because they only exist for, now they're gone. Okay, so let's see now, where are they? Okay. So I see silver, so silver is partially surrounded, like this. Okay, so there's that island, and there's basically this whole, this whole end. Okay, and the rest of them are all Yep. There might be if you, yeah, yeah. Okay. Okay. So, um, need to, I'm going to doctor this thing a little bit more. Okay, so methyls. Metals are on this side. So I'm going to do half like that. 
and half like this. And so I'm going to make a few notations. Are you guys following? Okay, so, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually, I think I'm going to actually erase these on my copy because I want to put what the period numbers are. Yep. So this this is period. Periods go across. So this is period one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. We do not consider these periods because these are actually in here. If you want to think of these as stacks of cards that live in a pile right between those two lines, that's good way of thinking about it. Now going down though, going down this way, we use two different two different words. We use group or sometimes you'll see the word family. Okay? Now um, groups or families or fat let's say talk about families. The thing about families is that they will often share characteristics. Um, if you think, uh, like, well, geez, I think of in my family, or my, like, let's go, uh, no, let's not do my family because they're half and we're adopted. Uh, let's do, let, uh, I think, I'll think of my, my, my daughter, my daughter's family, uh, uh, Danielle. She has, three children, uh, a girl that's 15 and two young ones, and if you look at them, it's like, oh my goodness, they all look exactly like their dad. It's like, it's crazy, it's like, wow. And then all of a sudden, if, if, if Danny, not Danny, if Shanna Bear, my granddaughter, turns a certain way, it's like, oh my goodness, you look just like my wife. So there's this family resemblance. Now, the reason why I'm saying that is that groups or families, these guys share characteristics. Okay, they, they share characteristics. And I'm going to show you why in a minute. And I'm going to get you to do some homework too in this. So they share characteristics. So much so that we have even named some of these groups or these families because they are so much alike. For example, if you look down here, and these are the family names, you see that everybody in this group one, so this group one is called an alkali metal. Okay? Now you say, okay, well, what's so special about them? Well, it turns out that alkali metals are soft. They're all metals, they're all soft, and they're all like super reactive. They're so reactive that, for, uh, for example, if you put potassium or uh, potassium or even sodium, pure sodium, in water, you put it in water, it burns. They're very dangerous, they're dangerously reactive. Normally, these things are actually stored in oil because there's water vapor in the air and that will cause them to react as well. Okay, that's how reactive they are. The next door neighbors, the alkali earth metals, they are harder, they're a little bit less reactive, but they're very similar to their cousins here. If you go way across the page here, you look at noble gases, and noble gases, as the name suggests, what's similar? Their gases, hello! They're, every one of them is a gas, and every one of them will not react with anything for the most part. There's, I'm telling a, a little bit, we little lie there, because there was a guy 
a scientist, a chemist at UBC in Vancouver, who actually uh, was the first man in history to be able to react a, uh, a halogen, uh, not a halogen, a, uh, a noble gas, and it was something with xenon in it, and when he did that, he became world famous. He was like, oh wow, how did you do that? He was, they don't, know, they don't want to react on their own. They just leave me alone, and I'll, we'll get why later on. The other guys are these guys here, the halogens. You know, the halogens are really reactive too. Like they, they are super, they're as about as reactive as the alkali metals. You get things like fluorine, chlorine, bromine, iodine. How reactive are they? Well, chlorine gas was used in World War I as a weapon. Say again? And World War II. But according to the Geneva Convention, it was, it was banned, but it was still used. So you guys, you guys know the story of, of chlorine, right? Chlorine, in its gas form at room temperature, has a light green tinge to it. So what the enemy would do, this would, uh, World War I was character, characterized by something called trench warfare where there'd be trenches dug in the dirt and soldiers would shoot at each other from these trenches. And it was a standoff. What they would do was that they would wait for the wind to be at their backs and blowing across to the enemy lines and they'd open up canisters of chlorine gas. And the chlorine would just float across the no man's land. And by the time the soldiers on the other side uh, realized what was happening, their lungs were being liquefied and they would drown in the, in the liquid in their lungs, die a horrible, horrible death. Not only that, it would liquefy, liquefy and burn and liquefy their eyes, the mucous membranes, in, just, it was a horrible, horrible death. That's how reactive it is. Sodium, I just told you, Sodium, I just told you, is so reactive that if you put a piece of this in water, it burns. But here's the thing. If I take some sodium metal, and I take some chlorine gas, and I mix those two together, what would you expect to happen? Salted french fries. Salted french fries. Thank you. Salted sodium chloride. But there's a reaction in between that is really, really volatile. But that's what you get, you get salt. Yeah. Not not in uh, in uh, not in the gas chambers. They didn't use chlorine gas in the gas chambers. They used a, a chemical called Zyklon B. Zyklon B was marketed, was developed uh, under the auspices of being, it being used as a, um, something to be used against uh, pesticides, it's basically a pesticide of sorts, but the, the Nazis used it to exterminate uh, Jews, not just Jews by the way, Jews are probably one of the major groups, but Poles, uh, uh, all sorts of, of uh, people groups, yeah. That's a good question, though. Okay, now what I want you to do is let's take. I want to take a quick look at this. What what can we see going on as we look at this table? Then I want to look at the Bohr periodic table. I'm going to match the Bohr periodic table with this, and then I want to talk to you about. Um, uh, I've got a. A prop another proposal for you. Okay, so let's let's see what's going on on the periodic table. First of all, let's look at the atomic numbers. The atomic numbers, every space you move to, oh, before I do, please notice something really strange here. Hydrogen appears twice. Okay? Now, there is an oddity about this. The oddity is that hydrogen exists over here in metal land and it also exists in non-metal land. This guy 
hydrogen, you can think of hydrogen as being uh, bipolar. Doesn't know what he wants to do. It depends on who he's hanging out with. If he's hanging out with certain individuals, he will act like a non-metal. But he's, if he's hanging out with other individuals, he hangs out like he's, he, he pretends he's a metal. So he, he has this Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde or bipolar disorder going on. Okay. What is a two-faced person? Like they're one act in one way, and you want to act the other. Uh, it depends. I'm not sure. I'm not sure. There's a there's a there's a Greek myth, in Greek mythology there's something called Janus, who has two heads. I it goes back to there. I think. So in other words, it's not original. Oh, of course it's not. I'm not original in anything. <laughs> Original? No. Okay, so here's the thing. For every step you go across the periodic table, you add one proton and therefore one electron. Are you okay with that observation? Okay, now this is where it gets a little bit tricky. For every step across the periodic table, you tend to gain neutrons. Not always one, sometimes two, but sometimes you don't at all. There are three places in the periodic table where the atomic mass, even though you're adding protons, does not go up. And I will give a prize to the person who discovers the three places for next class, okay? Um, so, in our notes, groups, groups, have the same number of electrons and I'm going to start invoking I'm going to start invoking notation here so I'm not going to write out electrons anymore I'm just going to go E negative so it has the same number of electrons in outer shell. They have similar property. And as you go down, you increase the number of orbitals, or if you want to call them shells, or if you want to call them periods, I do not care. All are good as you go down. The periods, so as you go across, you increase the atomic number. with every space. Every time you go across, you increase by one. That means you increase the number of protons with every space. And therefore, you increase the number of electrons with every space. Okay? And here's the thing. You increase the atomic mass with every space to the right except three places. And there will be a prize I've um, I'm thinking maybe I'm going to get some Timbits, I'll get a box of Timbits for tomorrow and whoever wins, but don't you tell me now, okay. I'm not going to give it to you because I want these guys to win. Yeah, you're basically taking away yeah, yeah, Timbits. You, you know too much. You, know, okay. you, you got to be quiet, man. You, got, you know too much already. Okay. Actually, you know, I should just go home and you can... Uh, three, there's three exceptions to where that occurs. Okay? Okay. Uh, please... Uh, find your Bohr periodic table.
And that looks like this. This here. Okay. Now, if you have a ruler, rulers are good. If you don't have rulers, don't worry about it. But. Okay. Okay. Want this? The reason why I put this here. Can you just can you just leave it there for me? And I'll, I'll copy a couple of you guys. Thanks. Don't worry. Okay. So um, the reason why I put this line here is because this line, guys. This line here is this line right here, okay? So you see that this goes, there's two, and then you got the single one here, that's hydrogen. Okay, so here, here's, here's what I want you to do. When you fill this out, I'm looking for you to relate this to this. I'm gonna show you how to relate. So the first one here, this element is, don't put the name, for crying out loud, don't put the name, just put the symbol. This is hydrogen. It has an atomic number of one, which means that it has got one proton. Because its atomic number is one, and because I look at this and it says its atomic mass is one, that means it's got no neutrons, zero neutrons. It has one electron. I've done that one. If I go across, all the way across, opposite side, Helium. How many protons? Two, because I took one step across, so this is two. If I look at the mass, it says four. So if the atomic number is two, the atomic mass is four, four minus two is two neutrons. Atomic number is two. Now, when and it has two electrons in the outer shell. Now, if you want to put them side by each, I don't care. But here's what I do want you to do. When you go down to these outer shells, I want you to use the configuration where you go around the circle. If I, if I had to do, uh, say, six electrons, you do one, two, three, four, five, six, such that these are paired and these are unpaired. So I'll give you an example. Um, where's this one here is carbon. Carbon has, its atomic number is six, therefore it has six protons. Its uh, mass is 12, so 12 minus six is six. Two on the inside, four on the outside. One, two, oh shoot, that should have been there. One, two, three, four. If I go over to the next one, nitrogen, Nitrogen is seven, seven protons, and uh, it's 14, so seven is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Now, I'm making you do this now, and it does not make any sense now. 
but later on when we start talking about combining capacity, it's going to make perfect sense. Okay? Now, when you do this, and you bring it in tomorrow, you're going to notice some interesting things. Inst in interesting trends in this periodic table. And that is the point. Miss Antonson. No. No. Um, we were talking about uh, we're talking about diatomic. That is how does it occur in nature? Okay? In nature hydrogen only exists in diatomic form. Okay, proposal. Um, how many of you feel that you could have done better in the uh, Big Bang Theory chapter test um, based because uh, we did it rare next day right after we finished. How many, okay, okay, here's my proposal. Some of you, uh, I've had feedback saying it was, it was too tight, uh, felt it could have done better. There are reasons why I did it that way, and if you wanted to chat about that, I, I'll be glad to, but it's not necessary for the rest of this conversation. The, the rest of this conversation is, here's a proposal. If you want to improve your grade, I have a way for you. It would be, I produce a test, and it's optional. You'd have to do this after class on, I'm thinking probably next, not this Thursday, but next Thursday or Friday. And um, uh, I'd produce the test. It would not be the same test that you wrote. Um, there will be, there would, I would still put the question on, on it about ordering the, uh, the uh, timeline. But other than that, it'd be a totally new test. If you are interested in that, um, I can, I'll can. i make the test, you can write it, and I'll give you whichever mark is the better mark, okay? Now, you say, okay, well, how do I study for this? That is what your digital notebooks are for. So, you'd have to know, you'd have to know and understand uh, the different components of Big Bang Theory. So, so what are the things? Uh, there would be questions on, there would be a, a couple of questions on the uh, tools of the astronomer. There would be a couple of questions on uh, Big Bang timeline, Doppler shift and uh, red, cosmic redshift, CMBR, dark matter, and whatever. I can't remember the other, the other ones. But there would be questions like that. It'd be to it's totally up to you. Uh, but what I would like you to do is think about it and say, yeah, you know what? I, I think I could do better. And uh, let me know. Because if nobody wants to do it, I'm not gonna go through the trouble of making, the, you know, redoing a test. Because that's a lot of work. It's a lot of work. So, um, let me know. Please let me know t uh, tomorrow. Is that, think about it, okay? And then get back to me tomorrow, okay? Please put your chairs up, let me go away. Oh, this is homework. Also, you should be keeping track of, uh, we haven't got, uh, I, we haven't gotten far enough, but uh, starting next class, you're gonna have to be keeping an eye on the homework page. Oh, yeah.
Where am I? Oh, oh, there you are. You're upside Yo, down. Yeah, yeah, I'm upside down, man. There you go, go ahead. That's my shape. Go away. Oh, I thought it was mine for a second. Oh. Maybe uh, I should just take it, huh? Uh, can you hold off? But I see Gala. You know what? You can. I can. What? The other ones are the other ones are still. Just give him a second. The, it's printing. goes 
is that hydrogen is here. You see, it's by itself. So the way this is, it's laid out exactly, except what they've done is they've taken this out from here to here. This, they've taken that out and they've put this together. It's only for the 20. Okay. Yeah. So 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 here, this is hydrogen going across. This is helium. Yeah. Go back to here. This is lithium. This is beryllium. Jumping across. Boron. Carbon. And that's so that goes to the end to neon. Then it jumps back here to sodium. So this is going to be sodium. And that's the or? No, no, no. It's going to sodium. The next one is magnesium. If you follow the atomic numbers, 11, 12, 13. See 13? Yeah. So 11, 12, 13 is the little one. Silicon. Phosphorus. Sulfur. Chlorine. Oh, I'm on the wrong one. No, I'm on the right one. Chlorine. Argon. Back down to here. Yeah. Potassium. Calcium. Okay. So that's how it works. Are you, you okay with that? Yeah. How are you? And then, yeah. Okay, good. And then it'll say what the protons and neutrons are. The protons, you get the protons from the atomic number. The atomic number is perfect. Yeah, so. The atomic so number. is equal to the number of protons, okay? Mm -hmm. Atomic mass is equal to the number of protons plus the number of neutrons. Mm -hmm. How do you know what the neutrons Well, what you do is you take, for example, mm -hmm. let, let, let's look at calcium here, okay? If you look at calcium, oh, I'm sorry, that's potassium. Let's look at potassium. Mr. Hayden, um, I wanted to do my test today. Which test is that? The one on all the... Yeah, okay, um, right here. There you go. Okay, if we look at potassium, we find that his atomic number is 19. So his atomic number is equal to 19. Okay? The overall atomic mass, it says 39.1, so you just round it to the nearest number. No, just hands up. If the atomic mass is 39. Okay, you're like that? The atomic mass is 39. If you have 19 protons and this thing is equal total to 39, yeah, 39 minus 19, so that means you have 20 protons, okay? So then you go in here, so you have 19 of these, 20 of these, and then you start, you start adding electrons. How do you know what the electrons are? One, it's, th it's the same, the number of protons, oh, the same, same, electrons are the same. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, and I've got one more. So the last one goes on the other shelf. So what you're going to see is when you can do this. You can have all these inside shells filled. You can have one electron there. This is going to have two, one electron there. Oh, so the same number of electrons in the other shell. You got that? Okay. Are, you, are you okay, dear? You okay? Yeah. Sweet. Okay. I still kind of wait. What? Okay. Go ahead. Okay. Let's wait, wait. Let's look at it. How does this? How does these two correlate? How, how does this correlate? Uh, so like. So the the board diagrams is for um. To, to know that, uh, 
Right. Mm. Is try to figure out electron configuration. What does it look like? Okay. So let's 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 walk through a few of these. Okay. So the this this d d uh, diagram here relates to this in that the uh, basically what they've done is they've taken. They've taken this area between the rulers and they've just removed it, the entire thing and they've squished this together up to calcium only. Okay? Uh -huh. Okay? Okay. So when you run through this, you can just line this up and say, okay, well, hydrogen, uh, sorry, helium. Lithium, beryllium, cross the street to boron, carbon, nitrogen, oxygen, fluorine, and then uh, neon on that one. And then we start again. We jump down to sodium, sodium, magnesium. Okay, yep. jump it ac across the street here to aluminum, to silicon, phosphorus, sulfur, chlorine, argon, then back down here to the final two, potassium and calcium. And that's all as far as we go. So phosphorus, chlorine. Oh, you're off one. Uh, wait a minute, aluminum? No, wait a minute, you're right. Aluminum, silicon. Oh, you did this twice. This should be Cl. And then our AR. That should be Cl. AR. Good, excellent. So you're there. Okay? So, are you okay? Yeah. So this one's going to be calcium right there. No. You okay with that? Yeah. Okay. So now, what you want to look at is the atomic number is equal to the number of the protons, which is also equal to the number of electrons. Okay. Uh -huh. The atomic mass is equal to the number of no neutrons plus the number of protons. Okay, so for example, if I look at uh, if I look at say um, potassium, okay, I look at potassium, and potassium has an atomic number of 19. So that means that he's got 19 protons, and therefore 19 electrons. But because the atomic mass is 39. The difference between 39 and 19 is 20, so you've got 20 neutrons, so this is good. Cool. You're there. Okay. Uh -huh. So when you start looking at putting in the neutron, uh, electrons, you're only allowed in the first level 2, then 8, then 8, then 18. Now, those are the maximums. So on this one here, you, very good, you've got 2 in the inner one. Uh -huh. The next one out is going to be 8. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So that's eight and two is ten. So I've still got uh, nine more to go. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and then. Uh, Then the last one, nine. So two, uh -huh. eight, 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 one, one. To make that team. Okay. So, so what what you'll see when you start when you fill this out, uh -huh. what you're going to see is that the the outer the outer uh, 
shell on each outer orbit, outer shell, or whatever you call it, is all, all of them are going to have, in this column, they're all going to be one. And then inside, all of these shells are going to be filled all the way through. This one, you're going to end up with two on the outside. This one, you're going to have three on the outside, four on the outside, five on the outside, six on the outside, seven on the outside, and eight on the outside. Except this one here, he's only got two to play with anyway. Okay? No, those are the things that, that in, in the past, I wanted the students to kind of like discover this. To go through and say, oh, because the reason why families have similar characteristics is because they have the same number of electrons in the outer shell. That's why these guys here all have similar properties. They're all very highly reactive. So there's only got one electron in their shell. These guys are similar because they've got two electrons in their shell. And three and four and five and six and seven and eight. It's, it's, it's due to the number, the, the similarities between these guys is due to the number of electrons in their shell. The differences are often to do with how many shells they have total. So sodium and potassium aren't going to be exactly the same. It turns out that sodium is highly reactive, but this guy is even more reactive than he is. And he's more reactive than he is. And he's more reactive than he is. It's crazy stuff. I can't remember if it was Star Trek or something like that. Or they, they used to fuel their reactors with something they called dilithium crystals. <laughs> which, which um, I'm not sure if that's even possible, <laughs> that like, that like the, even the terminology, because dye to lithium crystals, they, they, I don't know if lithium would form really nice crystals, do you, Hart? Um, I don't understand the question. I'm really and that's the last question. Star system. That was the. Uh, those were the systems that uh, I was it Bella was talking about. The star system. We talked about the different ways that stars could interact. We see stars in the sky. What to? Yeah. She. They, she said just give two. There's. I think there's about like six different versions of these. I have no idea how to do that. Yeah, it's uh, it's just based, yeah, based on what they look like, really, and what they their true nature. Okay, I'm these ones. That's what I mean. I have no idea what that was. Uh, that presentation was for. Oh, right. 